for you! Welcome back, I'm Captain Xavier, and I like all things modular, and what we have here is a fairly modular kit for the Strife X, designed by Silver Fox Industries. Link will be in the description, of course. And um, not only is this a really nice kit just in and of itself, and one of the, kind of one of the complaints that exists about the Strife X, and a legitimate one, is there were enough changes to the shell departures from original Strife that very few of the, of the cosmetic kits that we have for the Strife will actually work on the Strife X. It doesn't have standard nerf rail, it doesn't have Picatinny rail, um, the magwell geometry is a little bit different, it doesn't have a um, stock or barrel attachment point, it does have a stock attachment point, it's got a built-in handle cap, so there's all kinds of things that kits and stuff that work for the Strife that won't work on this. And this is the first cosmetic kit specifically for the Strife X that I have seen. Certainly the first one I've gotten my hands on. Um, Ryan from Silver Fox Industries sent this over. And this thing is an absolute masterclass in how things should be designed for our hobby. There are a number of just little elements that have been done in here that I've seen every once in a while in our hobby, but not nearly enough. And I wish they were standard, and I'm gonna talk about them. But first, I'm just gonna talk about the kit itself. It To fully install the kit, you do have to open it up, so you will need a screwdriver that can open a strife, and there's one part that requires a four millimeter uh, hex key. That's the, the bolt for this front section. Um, the rest of the kit can be installed with the same screwdriver used to open the strife. So that's all you need tool-wise. Some of the parts do get installed internally, two specifically. The first is the magazine catch or um, release. So this lever replaces the original one because the magwell extension here makes it a, a little bit awkward to use the original one because it's, it, it's not quite as long. You can, you don't have to install this one if you don't want. You can still use the original if you prefer, but you don't have to. And you are also going to replace the uh, iPro required plate that sits here on the back, um, or you can. Again, you don't have to. Like I said, this is a very modular kit. Um, you can either replace it with the Silver Fox logo plate, if you prefer, or there is this um, rear iron sight plate. Uh, this is actually screwed on to a plate that it comes with, um, so you can take that off if you feel like it. There are two different parts for this front plate, one with an iron sight, one without. So again, your choice if you've got your own sights you want to put on it, um, you can. And there is Picatinny rail caps for both of these sections of rail that are on here, so now it is actually proper Picatinny rail, so you can put all the various foregrips and attachments and, and sights and optics and whatever else you might want on there. There is an, another mag release down here that you can either use this one with your fingers here, or you can use this one with your thumb, which is my preferred method. I prefer the thumb one, so I'm glad they have that. And again, you don't have to install them both. This is an optional part, and I will probably remove it because I don't plan to use it and it just kind of gets in your way when you... for me anyway. Um, so that is easily removed. It's, couple, it's held in with a couple of screws and then there is a, a linkage bar that can just be discarded. And then there is a replacement rev trigger, the Bubalolo style rev trigger, if that is your preference. It isn't mine. I'm not a fan of these because, again, when you go to slide your hand up, it catches on that, and I, I prefer the, the low-profile one that they come with. So, but a lot of people prefer this one, they find it to be more comfortable, and, and if you're going to be using it as your primary and you're not going to be drawing it from a holster, then, then my complaint isn't an issue. So, again, lots of modularity, lots of variety. You also notice that there is a whole second magwell here. This one took me a while to figure out what the difference was between it and this one. And it has to do with which magazines you're going to use. So this one will allow you to use the magazine that came with it while it still has this lip on here. Uh, this lip serves no actual functional purpose other than to make it so you can't use this magazine in other blasters, so um, I will probably end up filing or dremeling that off. But with this flared magwell, it will actually fit. The other one is more specifically tailored towards Talon mag. So the geometry is just a little bit different, and this one is a little bit more efficient, uh, feeds a little bit smoother 
for talon mags, but it won't allow you to use this one at all. Um, it will, it, the, the lips will get in the way. So um, again, if you're planning to buy a whole bunch of these or you've already bought a whole bunch of these, there is an option that'll allow you to still use these. If you're going to switch straight over to talon mags or you plan to take those lips off, then this one is a little bit better. Just it, geometry is just a little bit better on that. Okay, so there's the kit. Fabulous kit if you're looking for a cosmetic kit for your Strife X, which I like. I love that they color matched this gray. Not perfectly, but close enough. I mean, it, it, it all just, it fits on there nicely. It looks like it belongs. Um, very, very cool. And of course, being Silver Fox Industries, the print quality is absolutely immaculate. I honestly have never seen anyone in the industry that has better prints than Silver Fox. Um, if you're looking for custom printed stuff, they're the ones to go to. Um, but let's talk about the design elements that I feel should be standard. There, nowhere in this blaster is a screw going in to PLA. Um, there's nowhere where a, where a screw is going straight into PLA. Everything is either nuts and bolts like we had here, uh, which is again standard four millimeter hex, um, very solid, not gonna fall out, not gonna come loose, and everywhere else that there are screws, and there's one up here, they're all threading into metal. And the way that that has been done is with, uh, I don't even know what they're called, really long skinny bolts, or rather really long skinny nuts. So the way, this, the way this front rail connects to the magwell and therefore holds the magwell closed is sc screws that come on either side. And I've seen a lot of designs where they would have just had a hole here and these screws would have gone directly into the PLA. And the problem is PLA is just not strong enough to hold uh, something like that. Uh, so what Silver Fox has done is used one of these brass, long brass nuts that goes in there and then you thread in from either side. And that is how things should be designed. He has one of those here holding this side, another one that not only does it hold the other side, it is also the hinge, which is also a super, super good idea because that is a load bearing point. That is something that's gonna be getting a lot of force put on it over and over and over again. And that's something that if it were PLA, there's a good chance that it would eventually wear out or crack. Um, I've seen injection molded um, things like the, the hinge where the pusher is on blasters. I've seen those crack and wear out. Um, but this, this is metal and it's being held in from screws on either side. It's absolutely solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, there was one spot where I thought it was going to be screwed into PLA and I was kind of dubious about it. But then it turned out it wasn't. The plate that's replacing that I pro required, there's a little hex hole here, and at first I wasn't sure what that was for, and then there's a hole here, and I thought I was threading into PLA, but no, this is so you can put a nut in there, slide it under the hole, and then screw into the nut using the screw that's on here. And that is above and beyond designing because you could just have a hole there and you just screw straight into it with PLA. You absolutely could, but it would not be anywhere near as solid. This is a more complicated design, but it is an infinitely better design. There's an, another one of those brass inserts holding the cap that holds this rail on. So this rail cannot simply slide off. It's being held thoroughly in place, again, by screws going into a brass insert. And the, that, that just, it's a, it increases the complexity of the, the design, increase, increases the cost of development, and it does mean that this kit requires more hardware than just a couple of screws, and it is still absolutely how it should be, in my opinion. Like I said, I'm gonna leave this out and the linkage bar out, because I don't like that, but I love that, I, that that option exists. But that kind of design work is what, in my opinion, makes the difference. That's why, Silver Fox designs are better than everyone else's. It's why um, Silly Butts' design are better than a lot of people's. Um, the hardware kit for the Nightingale that I got from um, the, the fellow I stayed with in the Netherlands. Also, again, everything's bolts, everything's bars, everything's metal linkage. Nothing was screwed into PLA. Um, it's why I'll just so many other blasters that aren't designed that way 
the, the screw ports that are screwed into PLA, if you have to open the blaster more than once or twice, they get shredded, they get torn up, they, 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 they won't work anymore. Luckily it's PLA and you can probably just heat it up and squish it a little bit and it probably would start working again. But definitely, definitely a far better design than it uh, really has any business being and one could argue need to be, but it's simply good design work. It's good engineering. Um, yes, it'll be, it'll cost more, but it will last you longer. And so in my opinion, it is absolutely worth the additional design work, the additional hardware, any additional cost that comes with it. Um, that's the kind of design work I, I want to see more of. So if, if you're a budding designer out there thinking about designing Nerf stuff, think about that. Try to design your blaster so that you are never screwing into PLA. Use brass heat inserts, use these kind of long bar, I'm sure there's a word for it and I just don't know, um, nuts, bolts, um, whatever. Just try to get away from ever screwing into PLA. Um, so there are my thoughts on this kit from um, Silver Fox Industries. It's a beautiful kit, I love it. Definitely gives it a much beefier, meaner look, a sci-fi look, and I like that. Um, love the color matching, print quality, beautiful. I would love to see somebody design a uh, something that has a, a a standard end strike barrel lug, though I don't want it to be 3D printed because that's a very load bearing part and I would like it to be stronger. But that's the only thing that I'm still waiting for, for and, a, and a stock that will match. Preferably a battery stock because it, it would be two solder joints to wire in a LiPo and then you could use either the battery that comes with it or a LiPo. Um, we would then need a simple cover, which would be really easy to design, a replacement cover that just locks on to, locks in there. But uh, yes, beautiful kit. Thank you, Ryan, for sending me this. Thank you for designing it. Thank you for raising the standard on design. I very much appreciate that. And thank you guys for watching. <laughs>